good evening everyone and uh, thank you for joining the sap fico introduction class and uh, we'll begin shortly thank you Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining this SAP FICO introduction class. We will begin shortly in a few minutes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining the session. And a couple of minutes, and we'll start. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Uh, thank you for joining the session and uh, I appreciate you joining the class. Thank you everyone. And um, so the purpose of this class basically is to introduce you all with the uh, overall various modules and sub modules of SAP FICO. Obviously, in one hour and so, you can only talk about introduction. I actually always start my classes with the overview. This is um, 5,000 feet overview, but it is always helpful uh, for the people to understand um, uh, different background, to understand different uh, perspective and point of view, people coming from. So at the end of um, this session, people can have a uh, good idea what SAP FICO module is consist of. So that is what we want to do today. And um, so introduction to SAP FI and uh, CO module. 
so first we're going to talk about uh, finance and then the later part of it we'll talk about control so that is how we will uh, divide our conversation today let me uh, briefly introduce myself so my name is dilip sad uh, professionally uh, in sap uh, i worked with ibm I, i was associate partner with ibm i was senior director with accenture and kept gemini out of new york office i did uh, several implementation of sap so been involved with many many implementation i've been teaching uh, for many years in fact uh, i started uh, my career accidentally in sap field as a teacher that's the only job i got so accidental teacher it kind of continued i liked it and uh, how many people i have taught in sap i actually don't know um, i cannot even count number of batches i might have taught in so many years so many many thousands of students i have taught in sap space so <clears throat> look at this pyramid and uh, let us understand what this pyramid which you see at your screen actually means and that pyramid basically divide decide define the structure of fico module also so very much the structure of this uh pyramid will also describe the structure of sap fico module obviously on the top of it, this pyramid we have a strategic and in the bottom we have operational tasks so strategic tasks and uh, operational tasks in between you have a tactical task so when we talk about um, operational tasks or tactical tasks or strategic tasks what does this really means in our day to day life as far as the finance and accounting is concerned so when you look at any finance and accounting department in finance and accounting department obviously uh we have uh, different different set of people uh, we have a junior accountant we have a senior accountant we have a finance manager we have account finance manager we have a financial controller we have a financial director we have a cfo so from the bottom up you have all the people to the level of cfo now all these people obviously from the junior level in the bottom up till the senior in the cfo level doing different set of activities a different set of tasks different set of role and responsibility so when you look at the bottom of it is operational tasks now if you take an example of operational task what could be that example so for example i'm creating a customer invoice is operational task so an accountant creating customer invoice um i'm posting a vendor invoice is it operational technical task uh, i am doing a general entry i am doing a uh, posting a general voucher yeah? so all those different uh, financial transactions and credit memos and debit memo and customer invoice and vendor invoice and general entry general voucher asset posting this posting that posting so many different kind of a posting which you will do on a day to day basis these are your day to day tasks which a finance and accounting department will do those are your operational tasks of course they are important they are operational they're done by junior team members but they are not insignificant they are important that is actually the backbone that's where the data is being entered in a way that is what the sap finance does so sap finance allows you to do all the different tactical tasks of a company which could include your general ledger accounting your general account receivable 
where you are basically interacting with a customer, customer invoicing, incoming payments, vendor invoicing, outgoing payments, sending to them, various expense postings, and all that. And now, on the top of it, you have a strategic tasks. Now, what does the CFO will do? Right? Now, CFO or a financial controller or a financial director of company, obviously, he's not creating any financial entry. Now, they need to make some strategic decision. What is my profitability? Yeah. What is my profitability is a strategic decision. What is my cost of uh, marketing function in 2020 versus 2019? How much is my maintenance cost in this year versus last year? How much I paid my travel expenses this year versus last year? Which products are most profitable? Am I making any money in US in this business group? Or we are losing money? Those are a lot of strategic questions, which a senior management would like to find the answer. Remember, a strategic decision, although being done at the senior level, but those decisions sitting on the top of the people can never ever be done unless the data entry in the bottom of it is correct and accurate and timely. So everything comes bottom up. So if you see this arrow on the left hand side, available information for making decision data flows from bottom up data entry people done the different activities and functions which is done by the junior and the financial accounting function that become the basis of taking any decision so on the bottom we have a finance on the top we have a control okay the first and foremost when we look at any module in SAP, whether it's a finance module, controlling module, SD module, MM module, PP module, or any different module, because SAP has a bunch of modules, right? Every module is constructed in very similar fashion. Every module has a very common structure, architecture, data flow, fairly similar. I will not use the word same, I will use the word similar. And that's very important. That basically means if you understand one module, you can correlate that with other modules, or you can help it understand in other modules. And if you don't understand one, you understand none. So every module in SAP, so every module in SAP is consist of we can know consist of following four pillars. Okay. What are those four pillars? So pillar number one organization data. Pillar number two, master data. Pillar number three, business process. Pillar number four, reporting and analytics. These are the four pillars in finance. And same four pillars exist in every module. Doesn't make a difference which one you're talking about. SD, MM, PP, QM, FI, CO, plant maintenance, quality, all modules. Same. Architecture is very similar. Now, what is organization data? Organization data defines legal, an organization structure of company. Now, what is this basically means? Now, when say a company, what is a company? What is a company consist of? Yeah, you have a Pepsi, 
יהיה בקוקה קולה. ג'ונסון ג'ונסון, אפל, סמסון, מרסידיס, אקסן מוביל, כל דה פאמלי, או איני אוף דוס קומפני, כל אוף דה יוז אס אפי. וואט איז פפסי? So Pepsi is a bunch of people, yeah, doing different functions. They have different departments. They have finance department, sales department, purchasing department, inventory department, shipping department, distribution department, quality department, and so on and so forth. And then all these different companies are consist of different organization entities they have different plants different warehouses different stores they have different building in building this you have finance people sitting and then they have a, a distribution center in uh, alaska and they have a di- warehouse here in philadelphia and you have another store in boston all that are organization units where your organization is footprint are there where you have a bunch of people working in all these different departments whether it's a finance or sales or purchasing distribution inventory all that and all those departments consist of an organization structure and all those bunch of people hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people together doing certain set of function when you combine all those people together it become a company And all those people are doing different functions. And those departments, in SAP terms, are called organization data. Organization data represent internal structure of the company. Then you have a master data. Now what is the example of master data? Master data, which is used again and again, repeatedly. For example, you have a customer, you have a supplier, you have products, you have a GL master, et cetera. Now that is called master data because you are selling with this customer every day. You're buying from this supplier every day. You are buying and selling this product every day. You are using this expense in a ledger every day. So the data which is used again and again repetitively, like customer, like vendor, is called master data. And then the business processes. Business process basically means various business functions. Now, what is the business function? I'm doing a customer invoice. It's a business function. I'm doing a vendor invoice. It's a function. I have an incoming payment from a customer. I have a general entry. Business function, yeah? So all, there are many, many, many such business functions which you perform. Those are called business processes and business functions. And then what do you do with all that? You do reporting, you do analytics, you make sense out of it. And that is basically reporting analytics. This is your strategic decision making which happens here. Because you use this um, data to make a strategic decision. Well, we are not making any money in this plant in Illinois. Oh, so probably we should close that warehouse we are not, because we are not making any money at all. Well, this product line is best selling. Oh, we need to invest more money into it. Oh, this product line is not making any money. Actually, in fact, we may better make a loss. We, we should close it. So a strategic decision making is done on the basis of all this strategic data and that's what happens in finance that's exactly what happens in every module in SAP we are constructed in very similar fashion here this is the organized structure of the company look at this picture carefully 
Let's look at this picture carefully. Now, what does this picture say? Okay, now this is just an example. I have a Pepsi. Yeah, I took the example of Pepsi because it's a common example. It can apply to any company for that matter. You have a Pepsi Canada, you have Pepsi US, and Pepsi you have you have a this plant and this is store, this warehouse, this group, this unit, this distribution center. They're all hierarchically connected. And within Pepsi, you can have many, many companies. So what we have in SAP when we talk about organization data, there's something called company code. Company code represents, make a note, a legal entity. So company code represents a legal entity. I use the word legal. I use this term called legal entity. Now, what is this meaning of it this, when I use this word legal entity? So, what could be the example of this in our day-to-day -day life? Legal entity. So, let me give you an example. Um, so, you have Pepsi US, you have Pepsi Canada, you have Pepsi Britain, you have Pepsi China, you have Pepsi Japan, you have Pepsi South Africa, Pepsi Brazil, etc., etc. Possible. Pepsi is there in almost all countries across the world. But Pepsi US and Pepsi Canada, although part of the same parent company, Pepsi, but they are two separate legal entities. Pepsi Canada is followed Canadian law. They pay taxes to Canadian government. Pepsi US is governed by US law and paid to the government. All the belong to the same entity, Pepsi, but they are separate legal entities. And that legal entity in SAP is presented, it represented something called company code. Company code is one of the most important organization unit as far as FICO is concerned. Okay. That is what we see here on this picture. And you can have as many as company code as possible. When we look at SAP FI, SAP FI module is consist of these sub modules. And we can talk about all of them some point of time. General ledger accounting, account payable, paying to suppliers, account receivable, receiving from your customers, bank accounting, because you have a bank, house bank, and all that, and different transactions in the bank taking place. You have asset accounting, you have assets and depreciations and, and taking care of your asset life cycle. Then you have special purpose ledger for strategic reporting, your fund management, your fund and you're taking care of it. You have a travel, you're managing all your expenses and what kind of travel you have. And then you have legal consideration, where many times you have many, many entities, company A, B, C, D, you want to group them, you want to see a group reporting, you want to see group balance it, etc. So that is legal consolidation. Within finance, these are different sub-modules. The first and foremost is general ledger. Now, what is the general ledger? Okay. So general ledger is the most important master data. So geo is a master data. GL is called general ledger. Every kind of financial transaction you do, incoming, outgoing, customer invoice, vendor invoice, days, day, general entry, expense posting, cost posting, employees, ultimately when they reflect into the finance, they get into some general ledger. So general ledger is the most critical, most important master data where eventually all posting takes place. And general ledger, in SAP is a master data. Okay. So GL is a master data. That's what you see here. Now, if you look at here in this picture, you're doing purchasing, you're doing sales, you're engaging with the customer, you're engaging with the vendor, you're taking care of assets, you're taking care of employee and paying their salary and wages. 
Eventually, what is going on? Everything goes into geo. You're making a sales, into to geo. You're making purchase, paying to the supplier, going to geo. You have asset taking care of depreciation, into to geo. If you're paying salary to your employee, integrate with the geo. Everything at the end of the day end up going to some general ledger somewhere. And integration, GL integrate with all the functions is a repository of all the information finally appears in general ledger. Okay. There is something called chart of account. Okay. So there is something called chart of account. Make a note of that, chart of account. Chart of account. Chart of account. Make a note of it. Chart of account. So chart of account is a, a schema logical grouping. of different GL. Now, you can have a many, 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 many GL. You have a different kind of GL for expenses, for costs, for balance sheet account, and material expenses, and for payments, and this, and all those different general ledgers. Number one, has to be different. Number two, they have to be grouped. You have expense account, one group. p &L account, another group. Balance sheet account, another group. And you categorize them. You can also have something called account group. Account group, basically, you can have a logical grouping of different general ledgers. And that logical grouping or whatever could it could be, I have a one GL for my travel expenses. I have a one grouping of for my um, my meals and other expenses. I have one for my uh, material account expenses. So I have another group for my revenues. I have another group for my assets, whatever. But eventually you will have a geo. Many, many GLs are possible because you might have a different different kind of a financial transactions. You can have a dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of general ledger possible, yeah? Now, when you have all these dozens and dozens of uh, geo, now all these different geo are actually, have a schematic representation and they're grouped together in a specific fashion. And that is called a schema and that is called chart of account. All GL appears in a chart of account. Okay. That is all. Now here, look at the word here: country chart of account, operational chart of account, group chart of account. Operational chart of account is the one which is the primary chart of account. You see that three boxes here in the yellow. So one is country chart of account, one is the operational chart of account, one is a uh, group chart of account. So operational chart of account basically means where all your day-to-day -day financial postings and all that being taking taking place. And uh, one chart of account can be assigned to multiple company code also. So you, you might have a Pepsi US, Pepsi Canada, Pepsi China, Pepsi UK, Pepsi South Africa, uh, Pepsi Japan. All of them can use same chart of account if they want to. But country chart of account basically means it is possible in some countries, there might be some legal requirement to have some specific charts, some specific general ledgers for taxation. Like taxation is always very specific to that country or many other legal other requirements. So in that case, you can also have a chart of account specific to, for that country to capture those country specific expenses. For example, a lot of legal expenses and your taxation, etc. Because taxation is always very specific to a country. Then we have something called group chart of account. Group chart of account basically means where you can have a diff, these chart of account 
assigned to a group and you can do it for the group reporting and for group consolidation. So country chart account, operation chart account, group chart account. This is just an example of a chart of account. If you see here, is a chart of account. You're in that you have a different grouping, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here, this is your equity provision. This is in terms of asset and fixed asset. This is your material stock account. This is ER and AP. This is cash and primary cost, secondary cost, and all. So different way you can define your different kind of chart of accounts. And then you have something called COPA. COPA stands for Controlling and Profitability Analysis. That is called COPA. Controlling and Profitability Analysis. Then in SAP, there is also something called cost center accounting. There is something called project accounting, order or internal order accounting, product costing, profit accounting, and that all is part of controlling. But if you look at this picture though, data to controlling also flow from GL. GL is the entry of the data. So the, if you see the cut, this controlling is in the bottom side in the chart of account and financial accounting on the top. The reason is because that is the data entry point. So data gets into, say, I have a material and a stock account. It goes and goes in the bottom of controlling. I have some expenses, go to the geo, and then flow back to the control. So it's linked. The first entry of the data in most cases is a general ledger. And in the back of the general ledger, you could have different objects, cost centers and others, and that's where the data get into it finally. That is why there is a meaning to the way this picture has been presented on the slide, which is there in front of you. Then there is something called asset accounting in SAP. Asset accounting basically means going through your entire asset life cycle. So asset has your entire life cycle. Now what is the asset life cycle? Okay. Asset life cycle is basically um, where um, you will be taking care of your end-to-end -end asset cycle. Now, what is the asset cycle? Let's say you have a machine. Okay? That machine is your asset. Some point of time, you purchase that machine. You bring that machine to your warehouse. So there is a creation of asset. Then you say that this asset I purchased today, then is asset is born today. So asset has a date of birth. Then we say that for this asset, this machine, the useful life is five years. And after five years, this asset expires. And in between, every month, we are taking depreciation. So the cost and useful life of that machine reduces, 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 and the end, it becomes zero. And the useful life is over. So you're taking care of asset from start to finish. So if you see here in the bottom, there is an asset here. Asset is a master data. This asset master data is linked to a general ledger. This asset is linked to a cost center. This asset could be linked to a profit center. This asset could be linked in a plant maintenance to an equipment. This asset could be linked to a general ledger because that's where your balance sheet and PL coming to the picture. So asset is a master data. Like a GL master data, asset is the master data. And then this asset is linked everywhere, including 
to your production, including to your purchasing, to your investment. You're building an asset. You're building your office. So what are you doing? You're putting investment into that asset. At some point of time, this asset will be finished. So all those different areas, your asset is connecting to. Talking about, these are the different modules which we have in SAP Finance. Now let's talk about what is there in the controlling. So let's recap what we have discussed so far. So what we have discussed so far, just to recap, we talked about every module. It is organization data. In organization data represents the internal and legal structure of the company. In organization data, there are many of them, but the most important from the finance perspective is company code. Other example of organization data could be plants, stores, warehouses, distribution centers, etc. Then you have master data, and in the master data, you have a data which is being used again and again and again and again. For example, your customer, your supplier, your GL, your product, your items is an example of a master data. Then we talked about there is something called chart of account. Chart of account is a schema of different general ledgers. In chart of account, all the general ledger get formally is structured and in the chart of account you can have group chart of account you can have an operation chart of account and you can have a country chart of account and then we mentioned that finances is, is is a tactical and operational functions so from the function perspective from the business process perspective what kind of business processes Finance consists of, it consists of GL accounting, account receivable, account payable, asset accounting, bank accounting, treble accounting, etc. All these different kind of accounting included as a part of business processes. And at the end, you get the data, you report and analyze. Now we are going to the report and analyze part. That is where the controlling come into the picture where we have something called management decision making. We find out different costs, different revenues. So see here, coordination, monitoring, optimization of all processes. Because how will you constantly monitor? So what will you do? You take a conception of the production factors, production factors, the production, your items, your resources, your machine, your equipment, your profitability. Then there is also something called documenting the variances. Yeah? See that planning and actual variance by comparing actual data with the plan data let's understand that point variations by comparing actual data with plan data now let's take an example well this year my my plan cost for marketing is two million so that's my plan. And then I would like to see for that 2 million plan, how much you actually incurred. And that is your actual data. So you can do your plan data, and then you can do your actual data. That becomes your variant. You can capture this year in the maintenance, and you can do year-to-year -year comparison as well. This year in the maintenance, it's the total accumulation of the cost is two million, and last year it was three million, so we did well. Then there is also something that term here called 
contribution marginal accounting and cost efficiency cost efficiency pay attention to this word cost efficiency now what is this word cost efficiency mean okay this year my my um, marketing cost was 3 million last year it was 2 million so we incurred 1 million more cost but what is my incremental revenue so my incremental revenue is 50 million so that basically means by investing 1 million more i was able to enhance my revenue much more considerably therefore my cost efficiency is very high that is where the cost efficiency come into the picture you can do plant you can do actual and then you can also see what is my cost efficiency if i incur that cost in sales and marketing what you got out of it yeah integration so co and finance accounting are independent component they are two different module but as i was mentioning before data to the cost flows auto magically from co from finance so data goes to finance and from the finance it flow back to controlling so for example i have a purchase cost for buying a travel item i'm traveling so i incur the cost for traveling so when i'm doing the purchase i assign to a gl and that gl in the background is linked to a cost center data flows to the cost automatically to co from finance okay and that is what we see so we started with this picture in the bottom we have finance that is our operational activities and what is operational activity gl accounting account receivable ar account receivable account payable my bank accounting my asset accounting my legal consideration my travel management all these different transactions are part of my finance then data goes to controlling and where i do my different management decisions because i take my plan versus actual and define my different cost efficiencies in controlling we have these sub modules So first is cost element accounting. Second is a cost center accounting. Third is internal orders. Fourth is a product cost con uh, controlling. Fifth there's a profit center accounting, and sixth is a profitability analytics or COPA. So finance has certain sub module, and controlling has sub modules. and what are the control some modules in controlling cost element accounting cost center accounting internal order product cost so we doing product costing profit center accounting and then we are doing profitability analysis so all those different things is being all these different sub modules are there within controlling module so they so finance has certain module and then controlling have certain sub modules okay and these are the cost center hierarchy so you can have different cost centers and then you can manage different cost centers as you want you can define different cost centers so because in the real world you can have a many 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 different cost centers 
in all these different cost centers which you have some of these cost centers can be can have a, a structure to it so if you see here in this picture so your marketing product hierarchy so your marketing within the marketing you were other marketing marketing product your marketing manager in europe this is the marketing in asia is a specific in the marketing groups in this group you have a group 1 group 2 group this cost center this group center this co and this all cost center roll up to this group and this group roll to right top cost center hierarchy so you can define whatever way many many cost centers and then you can logically group them and that grouping of the cost centers is called cost center hierarchy so you can do the cost roll up okay now there is a cost center and there is also a term called profit center okay. now what is the cost center and what is the profit center so cost center which accumulates the cost so different kind of cost you can assign to a cost center cost could be whatever in your company your your marketing cost your sales cost your maintenance cost your repair cost your travel cost your operation cost your 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 office expenses stationery whatever so you can define all those different cost centers cost center is any organizational element where you can define a logical grouping of costs based upon your company you have hr department could be a cost center yeah. now profit center is which actually accumulate both cost and revenue now what could be example of a profit center could be many but let's say i have a sales office in boston now this sales office in boston is uh, doing the selling functions so they are doing a lot of sales to the different customers by start of the boston so because it is a sales office in the boston therefore that number one all the expenses which is taking place in the boston all those different costs get assigned to this cost center to to my office in uh, boston because they have employee salary travel this that and office rent telephone internet so all those expenses being incurred in my office in boston but in my office in boston i'm also earning revenue because i'm doing selling so how much i'm doing selling every day month week so i accumulate both how many different expenses i'm incurring and then what kind of a different revenue i'm incurring so you can capture both in case of profit center so that is the fundamental difference between a cost center and profit center cost center actually get only cost and profit center get your cost and revenue both now here you can have a different profit center hierarchy so you can have a one profit center second profit center third profit center fourth profit center so there is one group second group third group in this group you have one cost profit center one a second profit center then in similar way you can have different different profit centers and these profit center can go to group and these group can assign to a controlling area so this is a profit center hierarchy so you can have a cost center hierarchy and then you can have a profit center hierarchy now there is something called copa of profitability analysis now what is the property now in order to understand this property analysis we need to look at this cube yeah. this cube is a good example and this cube you will see some colors also in the green yellow red right this cube describe 
the our analytic dimensions many time what happens is when i'm doing analytics when i'm doing reporting when i'm analyzing a data we need to analyze the data with the different dimensions not single dimension it could be multi dimensions and you can define those dimensions so look at here so we have a dimension of product we have dimension of customer we have dimension of the time we have dimension of market so we have four dimensions so market means north america europe asia africa south africa what products electronic items electronics apparel footwear what customers or group of customers and in what time 2020 2019 2018 january february march so is a four dimensional analytic capability to analyze your information i want to know in this market so this market this product this customer and this time what is my profitability now these four dimension is just an example these could be whatever rather than customer you can have a customer group rather than product you can have product group by the time you can have a weeks or months or other parameters rather than market you can have a country you can have a plan do these dimensions you can define as you choose it's just an example it doesn't need to be this way but this is immensely powerful because this gives you an ability to do the analytics of an ability to analyze an ability to define the profitability of your company based upon different parameters that is where the copar profitability analysis come into the picture so summary so co is mainly used for gathering information it is used for management decision making where the senior management of the company can take a strategic decision uh, it allow you it it so if you have to summarize so there is a fi there is a co in fi you have a different function gl accounting ar account receivable account payable asset accounting bank accounting and travel management and all that and then in the controlling you have a different function in which you cost of accounting profit accounting internal order a copa cost element accounting etc etc in which you can check a budget you can check actual versus planning you can do your analysis you can do your cost efficiency and you can possibly take various management decisions on the basis of this data and you have a different key figures which you can analyze report in your as as you choose okay so sap fi and co we talked about this is my self praise i refuse to do that um so as sap fi and co uh, this my email address my phone number if you guys want you can make a note of it uh, it's just in a quick overview okay now for five, two a few minutes i just want to log into sap and uh, means talking what is it you know not even possible but um, just to log into sap just to show you some sap uh, content so i log in So SAP, 
this is how SAP look like. Everywhere, anywhere. And you will see, this is SAP standard menu. And this is where you have accounting. So everything related to the accounting is here. You will find accounting. And here, you have different elements of financial accounting. You have general ledger, account receivable, account payable, contact accounting, bank accounting, fixed asset, special ledger, activity function, travel management, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you go to controlling, this is where you have control. You have a cost element accounting, cost and accounting, internal order, activity costing, product product costing, profitability, cost of profit center accounting, all these different controlling elements are here. And now, if I go to financial accounting, and if you go to account receivable, then each of the function have all these different functions. You wanna make a document entry. You wanna post an invoice. This is a, I choose my customer number. Yeah. It's just an example. I have a customer. Costco. I'm just showing you user interface. I put a date. I put an amount. which account is being posted, what is credit. You got a green light, you can save it. What we did, we posted a simple customer invoice. That is how a simple transaction in SAP, just an example, there could be any transaction, any kind of transaction, you can post. See the message at the bottom. Document 1800015 was posted in the company code 019. What we did, we posted a customer invoice. What happened with this? If I display this document, this document was created in this company, in this fiscal year, in this date, posting date, period, cost code, this is my company, that is my customer, is debited for $1,000, and my EVN Amro Bank has been credited with $1,000. I go back, it's just an example of creating a simple financial posting. Do you want to exit? Say yes. I close this. I go to account payable. I go to every 60. I go to my vendor. These are my vendor. I can choose the one I want. My vendor is CVS Farm, is Staples. I'm buying something from a Staples. I put take some amount in the dollars. I choose some corresponding debit account. It's always a credit. Always a debit. We got a green light. We save it. See the message in the bottom. Document 1900011 was posted in the company code Z019. I exit out. 
say yes. And if I want to go and check what happened actually with this document, I can check this document. There's a brand invoice, the document number in this company code, in this year, on this date, on this date. So my my vendor Stepo was credited. There's minus sign. So wherever you minus credit, even Bangalore is debit. It's a reverse entry. When you do custom invoice, customer get debit, and when you put a vendor invoice, then vendor get credit. It's a reverse entry in case of custom invoice and vendor invoice. Okay. So, first of all, thank you. And uh, I appreciate uh, coming to uh, this class um, in this evening. And thank you for your time. And uh, we will be in touch for next steps. And uh, da, da, da. so my, did I give my email address? I think I give it to you. Yeah. So my email address, dsadatmythinkty.com. This is my cell phone number, 973-885-7245. So you're very welcome to make a note of my email address. Uh, my phone number, many of you have already spoken. Some of you have not spoken. So maybe tomorrow I will give you a call. You can call me. So I'm very sure you will have a, questions many people has already spoken with me or i've spoken with them but um for any questions obviously you can call me and i will be calling you anyways so it's my email address d s a d h at my and that's my phone number nine seven three eight eight five seven two four five you can call me you can email me you can text me you can whatsapp me as for your convenience and then i will call you back and then we can chit chat and talk so with that um, i would like you to thank you for coming in today and uh, talk to you soon take care bye guys okay bye guys take care be safe